Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can run Python in an open Excel workbook. In particular, I will cover the scenario where we have a Python script and you want to return the result in Excel. I will show you how you can easily combine Excel and Python by using the free open source library Excel Rings. Excel Rings can leverage Python packages to write tools with Python instead of VBA. At the end of this tutorial, I will show you some practical examples. Those examples will include plotting and updating stock market information, as well as interacting with APIs and return the result to Excel, and even creating a PDF stock report. However, in this tutorial, I will not cover how to execute a Python script from Excel. I will make a separate video on this, which you will find in the description box down below once I have released it. And without further ado, let us get started. For the sake of explanation, I will create two datasets. For this, I will be using the pandas library as well as the pandas data reader to retrieve stock market data. If you want to follow along and you do not have those libraries installed yet, you could run the following cell. The libraries will be then installed in the current instance of Python, which launched the Jupyter Notebook. Next, I will import the libraries. I will not go into the detail for the following function, as we will be focused on Excel rings in this tutorial. Essentially, this function will return a data frame, which contains the adjusted close price in December 2020, for any given ticker symbol. For this example, I am retrieving the adjusted close price for Tesla. The second dataset is from the Seaborn library, which contains the miles per gallon information for different vehicles. Having those two datasets, let's see how we can combine the power of Excel and Python to manipulate the data by using Excel rings. You can install Excel rings by typing pip install Excel rings. If you're using Anaconda, Excel rings comes already pre-installed. However, I highly recommend you to update the Excel rings library to have access to the latest features. To update the library, you could use the dash dash upgrade command. Once installed, I will import Excel rings as XW. In the first section, I am going to show you a very quick and easy way on how to inspect any data frame directly in Excel. As you can see, Pandas does not print out all the rows of the data frame. You could now change this behavior in Pandas to display more rows or columns. However, you could also use the XWView method to inspect the dataset directly in Excel. Running the cell will open up a new workbook. The data frame is automatically converted to an Excel table. You could now go ahead and easily filter the columns or scroll for all the available rows. Needless to say, you could inspect your dataset also with various pandas functions. But especially when dealing with smaller datasets, I think this is a great way to explore your data. I will also open up the stock market dataset in Excel. With Excel Wings version 0.22, there's also a new function available to directly load data from Excel to a pandas data frame. If you select the data, go back to your Python script and run the Excel rings load method, it will convert the selection into a pandas data frame. Alright, so this was the quick and easy way. Coming up next, I will show you a little bit more explicit way on how to interact with Excel. The first thing you want to do is to build a connection between Python and an Excel workbook. To get a connection to an Excel workbook, there are three scenarios. In the first scenario, you want to run your code in a new workbook. So Excel Wings should create a new workbook and execute your Python code in there. The second case is that you have already an unsafe workbook open in which you want to run Python. And last but not least, you have already a saved workbook which you want to manipulate. Let us go ahead and see how to connect to a new workbook. I will store the connection to that workbook in a variable called wb. To initiate a new workbook, you can type xw.book. Running the cell will open up a new workbook. Now we just need to specify the worksheet we want to manipulate. To specify the sheet, you could either type the name, so like sheet1, or use zero base indexing. For me, I'm going to interact with the first worksheet. So the index is zero. Once Excel Wings knows the workbook and worksheet, I will further specify the cell we want to interact with. In this example, cell A1. The value should be equal to our small data frame of ticker symbols, which we have created earlier. And if you know VBA, you should recognize the familiar syntax here. 
After running this cell, we can see our values starting from cell A1. In the next scenario, I will connect to an open but unsafe workbook. Therefore, I will open up a new Excel workbook. It is very similar to the code before. You just need to define the workbook name, which you could find over here. Like before, I will declare the sheet variable, which will be equal to the first worksheet. This time, I will export the stock market data frame to Excel, which we have created earlier. To save the workbook, you could type w.save, followed by the name of the workbook. We can close the workbook with the following command, and I will also close the workbook we have created earlier. If we have a look in the directory of this Jupyter Notebook, we will find our stock.xlsx workbook. This workbook will serve as an example on how to connect to a saved workbook. To open up this workbook, I will first define the file path by using the built-in Python library pathlib. As a next step, I am passing over the file path to the Excel Rings book method. Running the cell will open up the workbook. If the workbook would have been already open, Excel Rings will not reopen it. Instead, it will just establish a connection to the workbook in the background. As seen before, I will specify the worksheet. This time, I am using the worksheet name instead of the index. After connecting Python and an Excel workbook, let us discover some Excel Wings functionalities. Keep in mind, Excel Wings has a lot more to offer. I will just show you some of my favorite methods here. All the available methods can be found in the official documentation. I will now go ahead and add another worksheet called Basic Examples. Reading cell values is very similar to what we have seen so far. In this case, I am reading in only one cell. However, you could also read a cell range. Excel rings will convert the values to a Python list. All available Excel formulas could be also inserted via Excel rings. Here I will keep it simple and insert this formula in cell B1. Instead of hard-coded cell ranges like A1, B1, etc., I often use name ranges. It gives you much more flexibility if you move the cells around. As an example, I will create a list of month names by using the Excel autocompletion function. After highlighting the cells, I can provide a name for this particular cell range. I will call mine months. Back in Excel Wings, instead of specifying the range between D3 and D13, I could use the name range months to get the values. If we print this out, it will return the months in a list. Likewise, we could also set a name range from Excel Wings. After running this cell, we can see that Excel has now the new name range called ticker list. One of my absolute favorite features in Excel Wings is the ability to convert Excel data into a pandas data frame. To give you an idea on how easy it is, I will shortly create some dummy sales and profit figures in Excel. Once done, let me break down the following line of code. I am selecting here cell D2. The command expand table translates to the operation if you would press Ctrl Shift down and Ctrl Shift right on your keyboard to select the Excel range. It will grab all the data without needing to specify the exact range which gives you all the flexibility as this code will also work even though you add more rows or columns. The first argument of this option is the desired output of those values. In my case, it should return a pandas data frame. By running the cell, we could check our new data frame below. And now you could use this data frame to further manipulate it with the help of the pandas library, like getting the average sales amount, for example. Instead of saving this workbook as an Excel file, you could also convert it to a PDF. Back in the folder, we have now our freshly created PDF file where each worksheet is on a separate page. After knowing the basic operations and functions in Excel Wings, I will show you some more practical examples. For this, I will be using the matplotlib library. I will use my helper function to retrieve the adjusted close price for Tesla and store it in a data frame. As a next step, I'm using the built-in pandas plotting capabilities to plot the adjusted close price in a line chart. Excel Wings allows you to directly insert matplotlib charts in Excel. To get the matplotlib figure object from the pandas chart, we can use the getFigure method. Next, I will add a new worksheet. In this new worksheet, I will insert the line chart we just have created. 
and I think this alone is pretty cool, but it's getting even better. As I have set update to true, we could now go back to our function and return the adjusted close price for Facebook. After plotting the Facebook closing price, we could rerun our code and it will automatically update the chart in our Excel workbook. If you would have set update to false, Excel Wings would insert a new image in the workbook. I think this is a super cool feature and you can already see how powerful and useful this library is. Just to give you some more ideas, in the next example I'm using the request library to connect with an API. The following function will return a useless fact. After adding another worksheet, I'm now inserting the useless fact in cell A1. So instead of doing all the hard work in VBA to get some data from an API, you could leverage the power of Python with all the available libraries and integrate it into Excel. Similar to the plotting example with matplotlib, Excel Wings can also insert and update images in Excel. In this example, I'm using another API to retrieve a doc image and store it in the same directory as the current Jupyter Notebook. Instead of passing over the matplotlib figure, you could insert the absolute image path. After running this cell, it will insert the image into the worksheet. As I have also set update to true, the image will be updated whenever I rerun my function again. In the last example, we will bring all the knowledge together from what we have learned in this tutorial. In the folder stock report, you will find the following Excel file. The report shows the cumulative returns, drawdowns, daily returns, as well as a monthly return heat map for any given ticker symbol. Currently, you can see the performance of Alphabet, so the ticker symbol is GOOG. Let me update this to Facebook. The charts are generated with the help of the Cornstats library, which you can install by running the following cell. After importing the library, I will set the workbook connection to the stock report and specify the worksheet we want to manipulate. In the following function, I'm now getting the ticker symbol from Excel, which is in cell B1. Once we have the ticker symbol, I'm generating the performance snapshot and the monthly return heat map by using the Quantstats library and store those in separate images. Once done, I can return those images, update the charts in Excel and convert it to a PDF. After running the cell, I can see the new PDF with the information for Facebook. Now I could just go ahead and change the ticker symbol directly in Excel, run my Python file and I will get the updated report. Ok guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you can see how powerful Excel Wings can be. So in the future I will be also creating more tutorials and examples on how to combine Excel and Python. And as always, if you have any questions or need further support, just let me know in the comment sections down below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.